All right, guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Thanks for dropping by. Tonight, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a rule of thirds grid or a grid of thirds in Affinity Photo 2.2. First, I'll show you how to set up the grid. Then I'll show you how to save it as a preset. After that, I'll show you how to categorize and organize your presets so that you can refer to them in the future when you're working on similar projects. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through all that and we'll get everything set up and we'll teach you how to do that. And then at the end, we'll have a little fun editing this photograph that I took. Last month while I was on honeymoon with my wife, we had an incredible time, took a lot of photographs. This was one, this little island over here got me thinking about the rule of thirds. And I, I wondered to myself, I didn't use a grid when I shot the photo. I just composed it in the viewfinder and took the picture. I'm not um, really into photography, but my interest is growing these days. So anyway, when I looked at this, I started thinking, does this island fall along a third? Let's check it out. Let's find out. So the first thing we want to do is we go to view, we go to grid and axis. Uh, from here, you can see that uh, we've got automatic and show grid is not checked. If I click show grid, nothing shows up. That's because there's zero pixel spacing, one division. If I go to basic, they usually start you out with a 64 pixel grid uh, when you open up a project in Affinity Photo or any of the Affinity apps for that matter. But you can't control the X and Y axis. Here, this is a 64 pixel grid based on the X axis of the photo. We need to be able to edit the values for the Y axis. How do we do that? We go to advanced. Now here, there's a little box that says uniform. You wanna uncheck that box. When I do, I'll be given access to the Y axis. But now I need to figure out what the values are uh, that I need to plug in here in order to be able to create my custom grid. Well, it's pretty awesome because here, when you open up a photo in Affinity Photo, it gives you all the information about the photo, the size of it, uh, how large it is on your computer, what's the color space, and um, you know wh what kind of a camera it was shot on, and all that information that uh, pro photographers would be curious about. Um, here, we just need these numbers here, 4032 by 3024. So if I open this up, plug these numbers in, you can start to see the grid changing. But it's gone. That's because I need to add in the divisions of three. So I go in here and I put in three. And bingo. I've got a grid by thirds. Super easy. Now, I want to save this because, you know, if I'm editing a bunch of photos from my iPhone in the future, maybe I want to sort of recompose the shots. I definitely want to recompose this one. There are a few things that are bothering me. I think it's cool that the island fell along a third, but it's not quite on the third the way I want it to be. So I kind of want to scooch it over just a little bit. Also, I want to get this uh, sort of uh, piece of cork or, you know, um, it looks like, a, you know, it could have been a, like a, like a floating like sort of buoy from like one of the fishing ships that are out here um, fishing all the time uh, off the coast. So we, we want to uh, sort of get rid of that. And I also notice now looking at this photo that the horizon line is slightly off. It's not level. It's, uh, you know, drooping down, you know, like half a degree or something. So I kind of want to solve that and, and sort of align it with this grid. So we're going to do that a little bit later, but first, so that I can quickly do this again in the future without having to build the grid every time. I'm going to save this as a preset. So we'll show you how to do that. And also, by the way, a uh, cool keyboard shortcut that you might want to know to hide your grid is pretty easy. Command comma shows and hides the grid. Oops, sorry. You got to be selecting the program. So there you go. Um, if you want to show the grid, command comma. All right. So We've got that out of the way. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to go back to grid and axis. I want to go here to the burger menu and then create a preset. Uh, this photo and many, many, many of the photos that I have were shot on iPhone 12. So what I'm going to call this is iPhone 12 grid by thirds. Oh, I will call this landscape by thirds, right? Because later, we, you know, 
we, we might want to set up a different custom grid for portrait photographs. So we'll call this landscape by thirds, iPhone 12, create. Cool. And that's done. And then now what I want to do is create a preset category so that I can manage all the presets that I intend to save in the future, uh, you know, for editing photos that come off of my iPhone. So I'll go back to the burger menu. And then what I'll do is I'll go to manage presets. I'll open this up. Then I'll create a category. I'm going to call this iPhone 12 photo editing. Click create. It'll give me a category down here and I can just drag and drop this into that category. And that's it folks. Uh, we set up a simple grid by thirds. We learned a little keyboard shortcut to show and hide the grid. We, um, learned how to save a preset and, uh, you know, manage it with categories. There you go. And I forgot to talk about the, uh, the way you can custom colorize your grid. I usually, you know, you know, like I said, I don't take photographs too often, but when I do, um, uh, work on something like, you know, like a photograph or like a large uh, spread image that has, uh, you know, a lot of different colors on it. I try to pick a color that contrasts with most of the colors that are, you know, in the photograph. Uh, I chose red, uh, because the last few photographs that I were working on happened to have colors that contrasted with it. Uh, so I could see the grid very clearly, no matter where it was on the screen, even in the mid tones and the shadows and highlights. So, that's why I chose red. But if you want to change the color, you can just go in here, click this, change the color as desired, and you can get as technical as you want with that little task. So there you go. Now, uh, for the last few minutes of the video, I'm going to attempt to sort of change this photo a little bit. I think this photo is really cool. I like how the, the, the pier here juts out and then juxtaposed with the horizon line, it creates this kind of an arrow to this pointing towards this island here. Um, so there are a few things I want to do. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to duplicate this and hide the original. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I want to take this with my move tool, grab, hit command, grab it, expand it just a little bit. I want to get rid of that cup or that, it looks like a cup, but I, I think it's like a piece of foam or something that washed up uh, during, uh, you know, in the, during the nighttime. And now it got, it got caught in the tide pool in the rocks. So, uh, it didn't drift back out, but, oh, there's a little divot on that Island. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. There's a little, it's there. It's like a double hill. So it's like one hill and two hill. I want my third to be right in that, right in that area there. I don't know why. I just feel like that would really accentuate that Point, right because the whole idea with the rule of thirds is that uh, by placing a points of interest along these thirds or perhaps on the intersections or even in a path that guides your eyes around the intersections or divisions uh, it, it, it makes for a more interesting photograph and I, I totally agree with that here um I can see that I, it's very clear to me now that the horizon is definitely not level. So what I would like to do is actually introduce more grid lines. And what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go into my grid and I could use a guide for this, but I want to just create another custom grid right away. Um, I'm going to take my, my Y axis and I'm going to divide it into ninths, right? I'm going to divide my thirds into thirds. Right. And perhaps maybe my, my, my ocean uh, horizon here will line up on, it will be close to them. I want to see if I have some kind of a golden ratio, uh, if I won the golden ratio lottery with this, uh, photograph. So I'm going to do that and wow, <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Um, but I did edit it just now, so that's, that's kind of cheating, but anyway. Uh, it is, you, if I zoom in really close, you can see that it's not level. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate the photo slightly uh, it's, until I can get it somewhat level. And I'm actually going to drop it down and place it right on a third of the third there. Oh, 
Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's get the hand tool out. The hand tool is super useful for when you, uh, you know, you want to, um, uh, you know, it's it's cumbersome sometimes to keep clicking the space bar. And here I'm I'm like, it's tough, right? Because I know I need to rotate this thing just a little bit more, but I know it's not a full degree. Uh, you know, so I think I'm gonna have to just um here's another cool thing you can do. I can go to the navigator. Okay. I'll use the navigator to jump back and forth. I'm just going to tug it just a little bit like this. And okay. Bonus time. Um let's go to let's just create a new view. All right? So what I can do is I can create a new view, drag it out into its own window. Zoom in. Check this out, guys. Get to the place that I'm trying to edit. And I think I actually, I, I almost nailed it. I nearly nailed it. I, it's a little bit above. But what I can do is I can come over here to my old view. I can control this, but I can see how it affects in the new view, which is really cool. Right. So this is a, a great example of how a uh, new view can also help you achieve, uh, you know, uh, things that are kind of difficult or aggravating to do. It, the, the, the photo was too large for me to be able to see what would happen with the rotation. Uh, the rotation uh, in the Transform Studio was going to be it's, you know, fractions of a degree. So it was going to be very difficult to do that with, you know, inputting values. So here. I can see what I'm doing down there while I'm working up here. It's really cool. And I got it lined up. So if, if I want to hang on to this view, I can just redock it and it works out, right? So that's also very cool. So now I can command zero, jump back out. And I think the photo looks much better now. If I take and turn my, uh, turn it off, I'm actually going to lock that into place. And I'm actually going to save this uh, in just a moment, but, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I think this, uh, this photograph could benefit as a black and white, even though the ocean's so beautiful, there are many ways I could probably go in here and edit this photo. Um, but I just wanted to, I guess, get it ready for some experimentation with some other stuff a little bit later on. And so that's what we did in, uh, this video tonight. Guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you picked up a few tricks that you might be able to use while you're um, working on photography or you know projects like this in general. Maybe you're like me, you're taking your first baby steps into the world of photography. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to get really interested in photography. So here we are. And uh, luckily uh, I have Affinity Photo to help me. Uh, Affinity Photo 2, that is, 2.2, uh, which um, it, they, they've added all kinds of new stuff. You guys, uh, if you're not um, if you're not in the beta program, join it. Get in there. If you're not on the forums, join it. Get in there. If you're not paying attention to Affinity Spotlight, put the bookmark. Get in there. Learn all this stuff, guys. It's, uh, you, it's like... Uh, there's so many cool things that we have right at our fingertips that we can use and uh, to to create uh, magical stuff. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks again for dropping by. Um, keep working hard. Stay positive. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.